Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a good one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's get into what I covered during t this morning's Crypto Minute. The debt ceiling. We are going to move sideways until I figure how to fix that crap. Right? This is, this is the ability to pay what we've already bought. Think about it like that. You bought all this stuff, the credit card bill comes through, it's time to pay the credit card bill, period. End of report. Um, Joe Biden, President Joe Biden has come out and he said, well, you know, what, what was his quote? I want to get to the exact quote um, that he's not going to go for any bill that, you know, benefits uh, wealthy tax cheats and crypto traders. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, I don't think that man was anything about crypto. I think somebody's in his ear who's telling him about crypto and everything that's bad about it, but I don't think he actually knows about it. And whoever that person is, that dipshit should take a seat. <laughs> Just saying. Um, yes, there are big companies involved in crypto, but before you had big companies getting involved in crypto, you had regular people and you still have regular people. I'm not going to say that there is not a large number of big businesses making big money and big moves in the Web3 space. There are. But there are millions of people that are just doing crypto on a retail level for themselves. And we need to pay attention to that. There are far less wealthy crypto traders than what that statement says. Truthfully, I think that statement conflates two totally different things. And we need people around the president that are actually going to tell him the truth and not tell him bullshit. Excuse my language, but that's just the way it is. Now, looking at that, I'm saying we're going to move sideways until the debt ceiling is, you know, fixed. Then I think that we'll see an, a, a small pop in the market, both stock market and crypto market. And then we'll pause again. You know, because in a couple of weeks, you have the Fed that's going to have their meeting, the FOMC meeting, where I believe they are going to pause on any interest rate hikes. That said, Minnesota, Minneapolis Fed chairman, uh, Minneapolis uh, Fed president, Neil Kashkari says, listen, I'm open to a pause so that we can review the numbers and see, see if what we've done holds. However, he is not willing to say that it will be an extended pause. He's saying, I'm willing to do a pause right there to see what happens. And if something isn't going the way we think, we can raise rates again. I agree. But that still says, I'm expecting a pause during the next FOMC meeting. And that's what we should be paying attention to. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about wallets. Am I using Ledger Wallet anymore? No. I am not using this anymore. I have taken my money, my assets off, and I've moved to other wallets. Depending on the coin, I've moved to Coinomi, Trust, Coinbase Wallet, MetaMask. There are many, many wallets and exchanges that I use. The reason why is because not every single wallet does what I want it to do. If I want to have a cold wallet, I have old tech, right? I have an old phone that I keep that does not necessarily connect to the internet unless I want it to. And I can hold my money there if I want a cold wallet. Now, I also keep my keys written down and I keep those in a safe place. Everybody's talking about wallets. Take your keys, open it up someplace else. However, I would say once those keys have been exposed to Ledger, if you have a Ledger X, you know, Nano X, and you believe, like I believed, and they, I could be wrong, that they had a backdoor to you know, what my private keys are and they can do whatever they want. 
Not to say that they would, that they would, but for them to offer that recovery service, they would have to. I felt unsafe. So I moved, literally moved my money. I didn't just take my keys and open it up in another, in another wallet. I created a new wallet and sent the money there because that makes these private keys useless. So I might have a dollar here, 29 cents there, whatever, for whatever coins I might have, but all that money was moved over to another wallet where only I have the keys and where only I have the possibility of having those keys. That was how I did it. Next up, attorney for Ripple, John Deaton. This guy is amazing. He's just amazing. He came across an email that possibly says or possibly identifies that the SEC knows doggone well that XRP does not meet the definition of a security fully. But they went after them anyway. I'm getting tired and a lot of people are getting, getting tired of the weaponization of government. It's a problem. So the SEC, instead of creating regulations that they can clearly share and, and trans, you know, transparently share with the public on how to do business with regard to crypto, they decided we're just going to enforce these things because we say so. And because we're big government, we can do whatever we want. Clearly, I do. Um, if they lose this case, they are going to lose an incredible amount of, of uh, credibility, an incredible amount. Because they've because Gary Gensler and SEC has weaponized their ability to prosecute. And that's going to make a lot of people scratch their heads about what the SEC does and how they go about handling their business. They've already got Congress looking at them and saying, you know, maybe it's time for a change. That's a big deal. And I think President Biden would be well served to look at the actual situation. Do your own research. All right, Joe, just do your own research. I think you'll find that, yeah, things can be better, but how we're going about them now is not the way. Let's fix it. It can be fixed. Let's fix it. All right. Consensus has been addressing this rumor, FUD, about MetaMask withholding taxes, withholding crypto to pay for taxes. It's not what they're doing. They came out with a statement and said, nope, that's not what we're doing. Frankly, what I believe is that so much heat on Ledger, somebody decided to do something to remove that heat and make people look someplace else. Hey, look at the shiny new toy. And it's not working. The heat is still on Ledger. Some people, I heard, I heard one of these popular guys come out there and say, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, I'm a big Ledger guy. I'm hoping that, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, come out of this and they'll step away from it and blah, blah, blah. No, screw that. Screw that. You messed up. You messed up. People are not going to look over there at MetaMask and go, oh, MetaMask is doing, no, they're not. I have a MetaMask account. I have a couple of MetaMask accounts and I have seen nothing like that. And everybody else out there who has seen that has seen nothing like that. You might have taxes to pay. That's on you. I had taxes to pay. That's on me. Not on them. We should be paying attention to what people are doing and not just what they're saying. All right. Next batter up. Genesis. Wow. Genesis missed a $630 million payment to Gemini. There's still a looming threat to Barry Silbert and DCG over whether or not, you know, they're going to take them the court over everything that's transpired over Gemini. And in case you didn't know, it's the Digital Currency Group. That's what DCG stands for. Now, that's actually a really big deal. A really big deal because ultimately there's a nine hundred million dollar you know payment that should have gone out, or that's owed to creditors of Gemini who who's claiming bankruptcy. Chapter eleven. It's awesome. Great. Good job. Not really. Not really. So the the Winklevoss twins are still holding above 
you know, holding over Barry Silbert, CEO of DCG, that, hey, we can still take you to court. So how soon will this all be taken care of? I don't know, but it's been quiet for a while. And I would I was hoping that, hey, everything will be quelled down, everything will be quieted, and things will work out. Well, it hasn't worked out yet. And DCG holds a lot. Last week I spoke about Grayscale. Guess who owns Grayscale? Just saying. There's still a lot that's going on there. And I believe that there's a lot more going on than what we're seeing on the surface. Enough that the SEC is even involved and in holding both companies to account. What that means, we'll see. Don't know yet. Anyway, you know what we should do? We should get to the numbers. So let's see. And like I said, we're moving sideways. So we can see how Ethereum is still deflationary with this amount of, you know, Ethereum being burned, a little over 34,000, 34,000 and a half rather, and being burned and about 13,000, you know, being issued. That's pretty interesting. I'm not going to get into the U.S. numbers because, I mean, U.S., you know, schedule because you can look that up yourself. 49. We're at 49 on the fear and greed index. That's saying a lot. And we should be, you know, in fear right now. And we're in neutral territory. But I'm in fear because the debt ceiling is still there. We still have an issue with the debt ceiling. You spent all that money giving the rich, you know, tax write-offs and everything else. And now you want to cut things for the regular person. Interesting. Good job, guys. Let's fix that. You want to cut jobs. You want to cut teaching jobs, um, police and law enforcement jobs, uh, military jobs. You want to cut those kinds of things. Benefits for our veterans. But give more. There, there are things in there right now that have been put forward that even that still give more to the rich. Like, are you serious? You still playing that trickle down game? You people are stupid. They should all go. <sighs> Deep llama. Yep, we're at less than sixty one billion in total value locked. That's sad because I can easily see how we could dip down below sixty. Um, when you look at this, you see my you see everything that I put forward before here. My green my green bands. And we're still moving laterally within my green bands. We did dip below a couple of times right there and right here. All right. Not much, but that's enough. That's still not good. All right. Still not good. Once the debt ceiling hits, I think we'll pop back up to here, maybe even past 31,000 for a little bit for Bitcoin. And then we have the FOMC meeting, which I think will see us get an even larger pop, even though it would be already baked into the market, right? This one, yeah, we always have a problem. I should always start there. It's a pain in the tail. We'll just go over to the list and we're seeing a lot of red, a lot of red. You know, for the year, Polygon is still up 14, Ethereum is up 51, Bitcoin is up 61. XRP is 36. I mean, I'm just looking at what's going on and what that whole story is. And when I see that whole story, I'm looking at Polkadot, something I actually like. Yes, on the year, it's up almost 22%. However, for the past 90 days, it's been down 26%. Oof. Oof. Not fun. And for the first time, Solana is down below 100% gain. <laughs> You know how I feel about Solana, but that's I still find it to be crazy that they saw so much of an uptick. It's ridiculous for 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 a chain that is not one hundred percent reliable. I still find that amazing. It's 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 nuts, and it still hasn't come through. What the heck? I might have to just cut this one out and find something else to look at that that offers a picture because it takes so long for that to come up. But look at that Bitcoin down at twenty six eight fifty two. Ethereum playing with going below 1800, right? You know, Cardano is up a little bit, but very little. Um, I'm still looking at a general market. Again, I'm looking at DCA. And when I DCA, this to me still looks good because I can get in while everything's still low and continue and continue going on. Because I, again, I think by the end of the year, everything is going to be up. 
That's my humble opinion based on my own personal research. You have to go do your own research. Must. I'm not here to tell you that, oh, this coin is great and this coin is great and this coin is great. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here sharing my research. News that I've read that I found interesting. News that my kids have pointed out to me that we find interesting. Period. Do your own research. Anyway, this is Eddie J on Crypto. I hope what I do helps. If you have questions, drop me a note. Let me see if I can research it for you. All right? Have a good one. Bye-bye.